Hello, a very good afternoon to all of you here. Welcome to Body, Mind, Soul, Life Talk number 19. This is Christina Tang. I'm still waiting for some viewers to join us. Um, while waiting, uh, always as usual, you know, I notice, you know, uh, to all of you out there, you know, welcome to Body, Mind, Soul magazine. If you're watching it from Body, Mind, Soul magazine page or Body, Mind, Soul festival page, a very good afternoon to all of you. Christina Tang here from Body, Mind, Soul Live Talk number 8. Eh, number 19, I, I think I missed the last week talk too much already. One of the things I noticed when I watch back all the, you know, when I would re-watch, you know, watch back how I perform, you know, catch myself of certain habits that I have. One of it, I noticed I have kind of dropped it is I use the word actually. I realized I stopped using the word actually that often. So that's one of the way to observe ourselves to be more, uh, to improve. And what I notice as well is I often open, uh, besides saying how is everyone or checking with you, how are you? Um, I always talk about weather. <laughs> I believe that is because uh, I, I always, I, I'm always live watching um, my window, just right in front of me, seeing how the clouds form, you know, seeing how the sky, you know, the blue sky, the sun. So that often leads me to ask, how's the weather over there with you? And I believe when we talk about weather, it, it also can represent how's the weather of yourself, how's your emotion, how are you today? So uh, as usual. I love to engage with the crowd, okay? So make sure you send a text of hello or hi to me, you know, if you want to drop by and just say hi to us or to me or to any of the viewer. Come on, let's just share some love and show me your love as well so that I am not talking alone today. Yes. So um, today the topic is about authenticity. So I'm still waiting for some viewers to join in more. How is everyone resonating with the word authenticity? Yeah. How is everyone feeling? You know, when, when we say we have to be authentic, we have to be ourselves, you know, that's what authenticity is all about, right? But now it's more of, I, I feel today, let's go in a little deeper uh, about authenticity when we we speak about authenticity let's talk about um i would say let's talk about how to be authentic when you are in a conversation like now so today is very special because i don't have any guest that is coming up with me sharing the stage with me i have a, quite a few uh, audience here now saying hi i have rachel Lee saying, hello, Christina. Hi, Rachel. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you. Uh, Vivian, hi, Christina. The weather is authentically beautiful today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is very beautiful over my side as well. Not too sunny, not too rainy. Touch wood. There's no rain, no thunder. But it has been very windy. So it's a very nice weather to have for the past few days. And yeah, so... Again, you know, Body, Mind, Soul Live Talk, we have started off since, um, I believe, since May. And every Live Talk, we hope that we are impacting any of our viewers now um, with more positivity because that's what the magazine aims to be a magazine body mind soul magazine has been publishing since 2014 you know so we have been in the market and again the lot still ha have yet to know us so with this live talk we also wish that you know through the live talk through all the sharing of every week you know um, we can bring out more uh, positivity and to spread more awareness about our emotions our body our mind and our our soul at the same time we hope that you know each live talk we will have some tips to also share with everyone over here so usually i have a guest and i'm the host right uh today is rather special i am the host 
as well as I am the guest, as well as I am the speaker. So I'm a little nervous here as well. I was just talking with uh, my admin team, my support team, you know, then she was like saying to me, now you know why every speaker before they go live, they are nervous. So you are on the other side of the wall now, you can experience it a little bit more. So one other thing is authenticity. So that's the word, right? And when I am a host, I have a sort of persona, right? Because when I'm a host, my role is making sure the flow, blah, 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 is smooth. And then I know there's a frame. I have to flow within the frame. But when I'm a speaker, I'm a rather, you know, what if, uh, there are a lot of what if at again, right? Like I shared before. At the same time, I caught my own what if I also... <laughs> choose not to buy into my what if. So I do not know what will come today. I definitely have a set of flow and a pointers that I wish to share with everyone when it comes to authenticity because it took me for a very long time to understand who I am and I'm still understanding, I would say. I'm still understanding who I am. Uh, who am I, you know, to be precise. And Authenticity took me a long run, you know, um, like I say, uh, I, I believe I shared it in one of the Friday talk uh, when our topic is be ourself, be yourself, right? And it took me a long while to understand that I wasn't being myself, even though, you know, I'm like I said, you know, you can, uh, those who are following the live talk, I've been hosting, I've been, you know, very bubbly, very outspoken, very loud at the same time, you know, and, and, and very spontaneous as well. I thought that was being me, but rather it wasn't, you know, like I have uh, Lao, Lao Xiao Shai, Lao over here asking me, Christina, what is authenticity means to you? Exactly. So it took me a long time to understand what is the meaning of authenticity to me. So to me, I, you know, a lot of time we didn't realize that, you know, we are putting up a lot of different masks uh, because of our upbringing, because of certain, certain image that we wish to portray, right? Um, certain reputation that we wish to carry, you know, and, and therefore we, we kind of like, buried ourselves, um, the real us, uh, into, into somewhere, I would say, into somewhere, so that you just portray someone ideal that you think it is, and uh, someone that you feel that should be the person you should be. So it took me a long time to accept all the flaws in me and and also to understand how to communicate authentically, you know, and, and that, that is why I, you know, today I feel it's time to also speak a little bit about this because uh, yesterday we talked about what is it being, what is being positive. And today let us just go a little bit about what is authenticity to all of us here. So to you, what does authenticity means to you and, you know, how, how you, know when you are being authentic and, and how you know when you are not being authentic. So for me, very simple. I will, I kind of know when I'm not being authentic is when I say something and I'm not happy about it or I say something and I keep thinking of, why did I say that? You know, it's like you keep constantly thinking, thinking back things that you have said, things that you have done. You know, like you, you, you just feel like you don't feel good, right? So I want to know from all the audience here, what is your, you know, what is your, what is your way of practicing authenticity? I feel that's, that's very, very important as well so that we can exchange, exchange our view, exchange our experience. And from there, we hope that, you know, this will also inspire anyone who is watching the live later or maybe, um, and maybe now as well, you know. So I have Lao saying over here, be authentic for me, for me means be truthful to myself. Yeah, but how would you know whether you are being truthful to yourself? Yeah. So Lao, I, I also want to ask. Like, when will you know you are being truthful to yourself? What is that kind of feeling when you are being truthful to yourself? Yeah. 
So, you know, share with me what is authenticity means to you and um, how does authenticity, how do you practice being authentic? So today I want to go a little slightly different. Yeah, slightly different. It's more about communications, um, the angle of communicate authentically, you know, because uh, there are a lot of times, right, I realize when we are in a conversation, um, a lot of times there are a lot of emotions that might have aroused or being triggered, right? If it's a, if it's a happy conversation, yeah, that's fine. But if it's not a happy conversation, let's say may, maybe being in a meeting or a discussion with your family, or maybe you are in an argument with your loved one, you know, a lot of times are you saying what you truly feel or you are saying because of what you are hurt or, or your emotions based, right? So I feel sometimes... You know, especially in a conflict, a lot of time, right, one is talking, another one chose to be quiet, chose not to say anything uh, because uh, to avoid any, um, any conflict or any further argument, you know. So I feel sometimes that is, it can be done a different way. So this is what I learned throughout the, the, I would say throughout the past few months as well. So today we are here to really share a little bit of, of what I've learned and at the same time to hear from you as well. So I have Lau sharing with me because I asked her, what does it mean by truthful to myself? And she replied, I would say, I feel peace, flow and happy. Yeah, just like how I shared just now, right? Um, I realize when I'm not being authentic is when I am not feeling good after I say something. That, that There's this gut feeling inside you, hey, why would you say something like that? That's so not you. You know, that kind of thing. So I'm not sure how about you all, but this is, this is what I'm going through. Even at the same time now doing this live uh, as a speaker, you know, I, I keep kind of like have nervous at the same time. You know, at the same time, I'm talking alone as well. So, yeah, so that is also one of the way being authentic as well. Even though I've been hosting for so long and when I'm here to discuss a topic for an hour and there goes, I'm feeling nervous, right? So I can choose not to share with everyone over here that I'm nervous, but this is what I'm feeling now. So let's just... Let's just let's just go from there, you know. As I'm talking, I'm also communicating with anyone and every one of you. I have Lau asking, how do you feel hosting yourself? It's very weird. <laughs> it's very weird. And I feel pressured. Yeah, it's very weird in the sense that um I'm I'm I feel it's a it's also a good path of learning, um, you know, taking a a break from inviting guests, but you know that doesn't mean that we are not inviting any more guests uh, moving forward. It's not going to be, it's not going to be you know Christina show or whatever. It's not about that. It's really about um, how can we give back and and share this platform together with the rest. You know all the viewers who are following us, and also how can this benefit you and I as well. So next week we have good speaker. I I assure you. And also good guests as well. There will be a lot of things to share. Uh, yeah, so it's weird. And my heart is beating very fast until I can't hear my heart as if my heart is not beating anymore. So let me just pull out some comments. Okay, so Vivian is saying be authentic means being yourself but expressing from the heart. Yeah. So this one, it requires a lot of practice. Vivian, you say it very, very right. Being authentic means being ourselves, but expressing from our heart. Okay. I have Darren so for asking me why everyday life. Ah? Hey, I work on every day. It's only every Saturday and Friday. <laughs> Friday is at night. Saturday is afternoon. And uh, Vivian, Christina feeling pressured on hosting herself is true authentic <laughs> expression. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I tr I truly feel pressure. I can I can tell everyone here now, right? Uh, part of me is like not here with me. <laughs> 
I'm like, I do not know what I'm talking, but I know what I need to share. So let's go straight to that. Um, you know what I learned from hosting a lot of live talk, hosting a lot of uh, meetings, right? What I can truly share is from my very, very own personal two cents per se. Authentic is not just about expressing. Authentic is also about being, just being who you truly are and listening to that person sharing or saying or expression, expressing authentically. You know, that takes a lot of practice because uh, I have a very bad habit. Uh, I know this few years back, but I've never thought of improving it at all in the past because I was very egoistic back then. Uh, sometimes now I'm still ego, lah, yeah? we are human, okay? So we are never perfect until like saint, all right? But anyway, so what I noticed, one of my bad habits was um, I always interrupt when someone expressing or when someone sharing something. I will always have my view that, hey, you must listen to me, you know? So I noticed... I noticed recently again that this is really not a good way, not an authentic way uh, because one, it's two way, you see, when we are in communication. So I'm not holding a space for that person to express authentically. That's one. Second, I'm not listening to that person from, with my heart and with an open mind. And that is also to me, to me, that is also me not being authentic because it's like I'm trying to prove a point. You know, I'm trying to prove a point right or I'm trying to prove a point wrong. So I feel being authentic is a lot to do about listening to our heart um, and also giving that space to listen to that person when it comes to communication, as well as listen to your own emotions as well. And then from there, we make a choice. Where do we want to go? And how would you want this community, how would you want this conversation to end? Whether it's fruitfully in peace and in harmony, or because of your own emotions and you continue to, um, you know, we continue to have like an argument vibe. So I want to understand, you know, all the viewers who are watching now, what is your, what is your, way of being authentic when you are communicating with others, whether it's your loved one, whether it's your team members, whether it's in work, whether it's personal, right? Let's see. Christina, how to practice authenticity while communicating with parents when you know your parents will not accept? Wow, this one I learned a long way, man. This one I learned a long way. Not just parents, uh, siblings and family members as well. Yeah, because you know why? <laughs> because um, I, I think I've shared this before as well. Uh, I'm always the revolutionary person. So I will go against all oath to do a lot of things that people think is weird or crazy. And you know, a lot of times when you have, oh, I don't know, but, but I, I feel that you know, wherever I, I need to do something or I want to, I want to go into a new industry uh, to work, I will, the first person, the, the first person that I will share was always my parents. And, and a lot of times when you have to really, you know, open yourself up and just tell them, hey, this is what I want and be honest, there's a lot of kadabak, kadaboom, kadabak, kadaboom. And you can choose not to say because you know very well you can choose not to say or not to inform them, but yet you choose to inform so I feel a lot of times this has to do with, yeah, listen with respect first, uh, take a step. Yep. I feel, I feel the first thing I really want to share with everyone is the power of choice. Uh, I believe uh, in the past, right, um, a lot of different talks have shared about this, the power of choice. Uh, different speaker also give a different, um, different aspect or different perspective of the power of choice, right? So when I say the power of choice is first, you have a choice whether you want to share with someone things that you think it will not be good, right? That is the first choice that you make. 
you always have a choice. No matter what you do, you always have a choice. No matter how the situation is, you always have a choice. No matter whether your parents during that conversation, how you want that conversation to end, you always have a choice. The choice is always lies on our hand. You know, like one thing I learned about uh, communicating with my parents is, is really like what v uh, Vivian shared, listen with respect first. I feel, I feel a lot of time we, we wanted to express ourselves so much that we've forgotten to listen. Listen to ourselves as well as listen to that person. So like what I say, what I shared just now. I feel a lot of time we just need to take one step back and truly listen with them to them. You know why why they will not accept? Is it because they have a lot of concern? Um, is it because they uh, they have concern over our well being? Or, or they just concern that whether we can succeed or not. You know, parents, they really do love us a lot. So I feel this thing is, is, is one of the things that I, 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 I learn. One thing is patience. And, and when I feel I'm being triggered or I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling angry, a lot of times I will step back and take a deep breath. Yeah, I like what Vivian say here. Drop the must-win attitude when communicating. Yes, a lot of time when we communicate, we just want to prove our point is better than yours. And that is why it will end up in a bad shape or a bad situation. So authentic, I feel authentic in communication is not about proving uh, yourself right or your point right. It's really about expressing your true feeling with a statement you know it's not coming from um, it's not coming from blaming or complaining it's more about expressing yourself with a statement I have Ling over here hi Ling where are you from Ling uh, put down our ego yes and that is so hard to do because sometimes, this thing takes a lot of practice, you see. And another one, Ling say, and don't take comment personally. Yeah, because if your end goal, right, is to have a win-win situation in that communication and also allowing yourself to authentically express yourself, when you have that end goal, right, you know where you want to go. Oh, Ling is from Singapore. Hello, nice to meet you, Ling. Hope you are joining us the whole session as well and, and do engage with me and share with me your pointers as well. So the second thing is, I always say with an end goal or end scenario in mind, you know, in this conversation, where would you wish to be? Who, 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 how would you envision that conversation to be? Let's say with my parents, you know, a lot of times when I have to open up my mouth to them with something that I know very well they might not accept it um, or they will reject it. But I, I carry the end goal inside me. First, I make a choice. Um, I choose to still uh, uh, speak to them about the things that I have the deepest fear of or you know, have to be honest with them. But the second thing is really about I envision um, myself, uh, how, how the conversation will be. What kind of, how would I, how would I wish to end this conversation? Is it my intention is really to allow them to understand where I come from and why I want to do what I wish to do? At the same time, allowing them to express their concern to me so that I know, you know, is, is this, I would say this is really a win-win situation. In the past, I will usually just slam my door and just walk back, lah, you know, walk back to my room and just not, not continue the conversation. But you know, through um, practicing spirituality, through um, practicing all that I've learned with Golden Space, with Body, Mind, Soul magazine, you know, I start to realize that authentic has to do a lot with our heart. You know, listen with our heart, be ourself with our heart as well. I have Ling over here. Yeah, as long as we set the right intention and we communicate with the intent. Exactly, Ling, this is very... Uh, Close with what I, I, I shared just now as well. What is the end scenario that you wish to create? 
you know, the right intention is really, really important. Ling, thank for sharing your tips as well, you know. I hope this tip also will inspire the rest who is watching the show together. And, and also maybe, you know, after that, they watch back, you know. So I feel right intention is very good. Um, to practice as well personally because a lot of time like what uh, Vivian has said you know drop the must win attitude when communicating so if you are coming from that intention I believe 10 out of I, I think la, for me because I came from that attitude before the must win attitude before I believe 10 out of 8 it wasn't a pleasant conversation that we have it, it, it wasn't a pleasant conversation you know and um and also ah uh, yeah so another thing is really i wish to share is be courageous to speak or share your thoughts and feeling so you see you practice the choice already you have your right intention and, or or another way of saying is win it with an end goal in mind that you wish this conversation will be in peace you know in harmony right so so this is where you can also be courage to share or to speak your thoughts and feelings, which is something that I have shared with you through my experience with my parents. You know, a lot of times as a children, no matter how old we are, our parents are still our parents, right? Somehow they they have, you know, somehow when we when we have to say something that we know we will upset their feeling or we will make them concerned, <laughs> we will still have the kadabak, kadaboom, kadabak, kadaboom there, right? So this is where the courages come in. And, and also again, you know, authenticity is truly being honest with yourself. And when it comes to communication, it's about couraging, a bit, have that courage to truly communicate your thoughts and feelings and, and emotions with statement. When I say statement, it means that I love what Siobhan has shared with me last time during one of our talks. Um, she said that, you know, when it comes with a statement, right, it's more like I'm letting you know how I feel. It will not come from, you know, you may be, you know, it, it will not come from there. You know, like this, I never, I will not happy. No, no, no. It's more if like that. It's complaining, right? It's blaming, right? Because you are blaming your parents or your loved one because of them. This is why you make me feel not happy. But what if... We change the way. We still be courage to share our thoughts. You know, one of the things that I always don't feel good is when my mom nagged me. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, I'm still staying with my parents. Nothing to be ashamed of. I'm staying with my parents and I enjoy, you know, living with my parents, right? Enjoy my time with them. But one of the things is my mom likes to nag a lot. Right. And and I, I last time when she nag, I will be so annoyed. Right. And I say, can you stop nagging? And this is the sentence. Right. But now I will just tell her, uh, you know, sometimes you continue talk, talk, talk like that. I just don't feel good. La. <laughs> it was just as simple as that. Instead of saying, can you stop nagging? It become, yeah, it become like, uh, maybe you say one time is enough already. <laughs> because you continuously saying it, I don't really feel that good. Or it makes me feel annoyed. You know, as simple as that, everyone. Sometimes it's as simple as that. I have Ling over here also shared. However, the challenge is if the receiver listen and accept our good intent, and what we think is good may not be for them. Yeah, this is where it will come, Link. It will come to the next pointer that I wish to pull out as well. The next pointer is practice respect and acceptance. So, what if you have done all the one, two, three, where the power of choice, um, um, be courage to speak, you know, uh, with a good intention, you know, uh, or vision, or, or, or think of the end goal or the end scenario, but yet the outcome is not the outcome you wish. Let's say your whole intention was to wish that they will accept. Or, 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 or to wish that they will, they will agree with you. But in the end, they did not agree with you. What would you do? How can you do? What else can we do? So 
when we're truly practicing authentic in communication, for me personally, I feel is I have expressed myself in a statement form. And, and if you can't accept it, and if you choose not to accept it, it is my choice again to practice my respect towards you and my honest uh, honor to uh, on honoring you as well as accepting how you think or how you digest the conversation. So this takes a lot of practice, to be honest, and I'm still learning this one. Practice respect and acceptance. I be honest as well, and I'm authentically saying this. I'm still practicing this because a lot of time, I still wish that things are the way I wish it should be, you know? But this takes a lot of practice, yeah? I have, I have, let me just pull some, some comment, which is quite fun over here. Yeah, Lily, Lily, Vivian is saying, haha, your mom's still nagging you, she loves you. Yeah, I, I know that. I know when she nag is love. So when you truly listen with your heart, that's where, you know, you can feel the love in every conversation. Really, it's in every conversation, whether it is with your family, whether it is with your team, your workspace, you know, whether with your children or your parents or your loved one or your friends. A lot of time we express because we care of that person, right? And, and, but it's the way we express that, that will translate into certain outcome that we wish to have or we wish not to have. Okay, Ling is over here. Yeah, end of the day, we are all different and have different thoughts and view. Just have to respect their own point of view, but at least we have speak up our feeling. Yeah. And a lot of time, like I say, right, I use that nagging example. That's a very good example. You know, in the end, all we wanted was to just express ourselves authentically, you know, our true feeling, our honest feeling. But you see, a lot of times, how to practice being authentic all the time, yeah? I also want to hear from the viewers. How, how do you practice being honest to yourself all the time? For me, hosting this live talk, you know, and, and becoming a guest myself and sharing this is pushing another level of boundary of my authenticity practicing my authenticity. You see, a lot of times when you have to, I mean, for me, right, um, when I have to do something that I feel the most discomfort, the, the first thing that comes into my mind is um, all the prejudgment on myself first, right? Uh, whether my pointers will impact life positively, like how our magazine or our live talk wish to do, you know, whether what I shared uh, will, uh, will, will give an impact, you know, um, whether will I be able to deliver, you know, all, this, all these things will come into our mind. Again, this is where I practice the power of choice again. You know, I can choose to say no to our program director and to the admin. You know what? You still go and find someone or in the end, you know, I will just pull you out as admin. You just, we just talk. I can choose that as well. But for me, I feel it's another layer of uh, peeling off of uh, myself because in the end, I have so much of, I would say I have so much of expectation, right, on myself. And, and that is where, things doesn't work uh, or, or I, I try to have different masks on myself. So this is where it comes in. Yeah, so I want to know from you guys how you guys practice being authentic, being honest, how you, how you know when you pull out that mask of yours. Let's see, Ling is sharing. Now that we become parents ourselves, we know why our parents behave certain way. <laughs> Well, Ling, share with me more. I am, I've yet to be a, a parent myself, yeah, Ling. Um, for us to learn to be honest with ourselves, we must first be able to feel vulnerable. Yeah, I love this, Ling. I love this. And go with an open mind and open heart. Sometimes it's easier said than done, right? It's really easier said than done that being vulnerable. I, I, I myself uh, be, you know, be, I would say, hosting so many live talk, 19 live talk, hosting so many different uh, uh, events and stuff like that. But when I'm on stage sharing something, 
you know, there's a, another another la layer of learning for me to be authentic of sharing what I share. Let go of expectation too, I guess. Uh, yeah, uh, Lao is right, letting go of expectation. You see, one of the things that, you know, um, for the past, I would say for the past 20 minutes, I've been sharing very honestly with all of you here that, um, you know, I, that a part of me is not here. I feel I feel one of the things is what Lao is saying, you know, the expectation, right? I, I, I too have expectation on myself. And, and that's where the prejudgment comes in also. When things is not happen, I have already judged myself, right? So, so this is one of the things. And, and when I, as I speak, as I share, and inside me, I kind of like make a choice again, you know what, just let go the expectation of how this thing will turn out or how this life talk of me speaking alone will turn out. Um, when I let that go, I can finally flow, feel I'm at ease, you know, I'm at peace and, and I'm really opening my heart to truly share. And, and yeah, I just feel the flow starting to come back, you know, and this is the flow that I was trying to grab just now for the past 20 minutes. So I believe me throwing myself out here, Speaking about authenticity is also an ongoing journey as I'm hosting, as I'm talking. I'm also uh, going through, you know, that layer of authenticity, that layer of speaking and communicating with all of you with who I truly am, you know, with who I truly am. Because when I'm hosting, right, I'm a host, so I have a different role. But when I'm a speaker, honestly, I can be who I am, you know, I can, I can talk a lot of nonsense if I, I want to, but... It was me who have re refrained myself to express myself authentically or to be that bubbly me, you know. So this is what I just realized along the, the, the you know, along the 36 minutes, you know, my screen is showing that I'm live for 36 minutes. And this, this is what I truly realized as well while I'm sharing and talking. Ling is saying, yes, yeah, something we need to be kind to ourselves, more kind to ourselves. Yeah. More love and I believe loving ourselves if is um, what everyone is going to. I, I feel now more and more um, are aware of our emotions and are aware that you know we have to be kind to ourselves and we will be kind with the rest as well. Yeah, so Vivian also here. One way of practicing authenticity is to know our own emotion. Example, when we are angry at some issue, but not throwing the anger at the person that we are talking to. Yeah, man, this takes a lot of practice. And this is where I wish to bring out an article from our magazine. When I was, you know, when I was um, um, preparing myself for this live talk, I was, I was, uh, I was searching for an angle to talk about authenticity. And one of the way, um, one of the suggestions from our program is to, to come from the angle of uh, communicating authentically. Because I, I kind of shared quite a fair bit in the past life talk about be ourselves, you know, accept ourselves fully. And that is one of the way of practicing authenticity. But I wish to also have a different perspective. And this is where I found a very useful article from our magazine. It's from our volume number nine, Love Your Magnificent Self, right? You can get this article later. Uh, our admin will pro uh, show it out. A Language of Love, yeah. You can get this article from volume number nine. The link is over there. And I believe we will also publish the website as, I mean, the link on our comment. So over here, it talks about compassionate communication. And it also talks about, you know, the triggers of judgment and unmet needs, right? Yeah. And it gives us, you know, some steps over here to also let us understand if we are to have any sorts of emotions, how can we deal with it? Like, like what Vivian have shared with us just now about, uh, about you know, if you have anger during the conversation, how you cannot throw, how can you practice not to throw the anger to that person 
while you are communicating. So I love, I love this article so much that you know because it has four steps to communicate uh, compassionate communication and consciousness. I feel this is very important um, to pull this out and to share with everyone because over here it shows us you know three language components of compassion communication. One of it is self compassion over here, and then the second one is about honest expression, and then the third one is emp empathetic listening. This is really what we are and we have been discussing, you know, in the past uh, uh, 40 minutes. So I really suggest for everyone and anyone who wish to practice more about uh, expressing yourself authentically or practicing the language of love, uh, compassionate communication, you can grab this article uh, from our website. I mean, it's in the magazine. It's from, uh, it's from our volume 9, which was published in uh, 2016. So you see, our article is quite timeless, I would say. You know, it's never outdated at all. <laughs> and I have link over here, 对事不对人. Yeah, Ling, but a lot of time, 对事不对人 to some of you out there, um, is we are discussing about the situation. We are not going against personally with that person that we are talking to. So I hope I, I, I translate this well, yeah? So this is one of the things that I feel is important for us, practicing the language of love. And, you know, sometimes that practicing of language of love is also to have that practice language of love to ourselves as well. Like for me, for the past, you know, for the past 30 minutes, I have so much expectation on myself that I just feel I cannot breathe. So that is one of the signs that you know you are not expressing yourself authentically to me. Because everyone functions differently. So this is how I function. I feel like I can't really breathe. I feel numbness around my palms and I was constantly working uh, on my emotions of, you know, all those uh, expectation, all those prejudgment that I have for myself. And then I've forgotten to, to, to allow myself to express who I am, you know. Yeah, so this is one of the things that I feel, you know, I feel, I feel, I feel it's good to share as well. I have some comments from my admin over here. Oh, let me see. Ah, okay. Reminding me, there are people also express their feeling, anger and frustration towards others. Does this mean authentic? Hmm. It's more like what Vivian ha has answered, right? Um, we, we can acknowledge, we, we should and we should allow ourselves to feel anger or to feel frustration. You know, it's not something that is bad. But I would say that a lot of time when we are angry, do we know why are we angry? <laughs> we only feel anger. But do we know what truly trigger? that anger? Is it that sentence? Is it that person? But what is it inside us emotionally? I feel sometimes throwing out that anger and frustration, I don't know, because I've been there before. Um, I used to throw out anger and frustration right away. And a lot of time it ends really badly, you know, very unpleasant. Um, and, and it, in the end, it hurt that person as well as it hurt me as well, right? Um, uh, I would say in Chinese, we say sang gan qing, right? Sang gan qing means um, it hurt your relationship, whether it's your friendship, your, your, your family, you know, your sibling as well. It hurt that, right? But, you know, how can we express our anger and frustration in a right manner? That should be the way we should look at it, I feel. Because first, if we react spontaneously towards our own anger, we, I don't know, I, I feel for me in the past, I react towards my anger so much that I don't even know why am I getting so angry. It's like I'm an angry bird all the time. 
the anger just keep on pile up more and more on myself. The frustration just keep on pile up more and more on myself. Not until I start, you know, meditating, you know, I learn about meditation through the golden space or, or, or read some tips from Body, Mind, Soul magazine about meditation. That's where I realized all this anger that was piled on on me, right? It leads to one point for me. I was hurt. Yeah, it was just as simple that I felt hurtful. I feel pain, you know. So sometimes I feel it's good in a conversation if you have noticed. First of all, if you have that awareness and you notice that your anger is boiling up, maybe take a step back, breathe in, breathe out, you know, and, and understand what truly triggered the anger. And maybe, you know, then you can communicate to that person in a more calm way or a statement way that, hey, what you say just now truly hurt me and it makes me feel angry. Uh, let's, let's us find a way to resolve this together. You know, how, how can I hear you better and how can you listen to me better as well? I, I feel this is very important. Yeah, Ling is right, mindfulness. Yeah, mindfulness. And a lot of time, it, I would say, I can say it is really not easy. Yeah, it's really not easy. But again, it, it is not something that cannot be done. It is not something that cannot be done. If for me, who has been such an angry bird for the past few years, all my friends know me, you know, whenever talking with Christina, she is just complain about life, complain about everything, complain about work, complain about this, complain about that. And you know what? I got a nickname back, back in my college. And even when I start working, I'm the complaint queen. And in the past, I'm so proud of it. I was so proud of it that I'm being labeled as a complaint queen. You know why? Because inside me, I thought I'm doing a righteous job. You know, I'm putting justice in everything that I speak. <laughs> Little did I know I was, I was being triggered so much that, that, that a part of inside me, I was so wounded with all this unfair injustice feeling that I never, I never had a chance to heal it, you see. So small little minor things, I would feel like, okay, I must go file a complaint because this is not right. Wow, that was me. Lah. <laughs> I can file a complaint to my college, to my student council, to the management. I can even file, I can even, you know, go to a restaurant, eat, sit down and eat. And then when the things doesn't taste good, I'll just say, you know, can I see your restaurant manager? Can I see your supervisor? And then I'll give all my feedback to them, thinking that, thinking that I'm being authentic. But yeah, when I look back now, right, when I reflect back now, all those words hurts the other person because my intention wasn't right. My intention at that point of time to communicate was to prove a point right, to win, right? So that is not true authentic that we are uh, sharing now or we are in discussion now. I feel a lot of time we ourselves, like what Ling over here said, recognize the change of our emotions. Yeah. Where do we come from? What, what is the intention that we wish or, or we have? So this is very important. You know, coming from a complaint queen that can practice and let go and let down my ego and, you know, polish that ego. At the same time, thank to that ego. So that's why I'm such an outspoken person. I have, I, when I'm hosting, I have no stage fright because of all these things. And, and that shaped a part of me as well. But, you know, when you learn and when you know something, you cannot un unknown it, you know. When you know something, you cannot unknown it. When, when you know... And especially for me, when I know speaking in such way, even though I deem it as authentic, but when 
that conversation hurts the other person. And when, when, when I know there is a better way to deliver the same message, but in a different manner, why should I still use that old manner? You know, I, I, I can start, you know, digesting my emotions, find a better word to translate the message or, or the feelings that I wish to share, right? So, so this is what I've been practicing on myself. And, pers- and, and with myself as well. You know, as, as I'm sharing um, this one hour live talk with everyone here, I'm also reflecting at the same time how far I have come to this topic today, being authentic, you know, that I, I realized, you know, in the past, there are so many masks that I put on. There was a point of time, speaking of authenticity, there was a point of time without makeup, I cannot go out, huh? Without putting up my eyebrow and my fake mascara, I cannot go out. I feel I'm not pretty. That is how much I don't truly accept myself. I don't accept this authentic self myself. Yeah. And, uh, and, and my admin, they are both laughing very loud at the back. They thought I cannot see them, but I still can see them. Both of them are laughing very loud. Yes. So like that. So that was who I am and that is who I am now. Um, as I speak, uh, at the same time, I would say I'm, I am still practicing. Yeah, I'm still on the journey of learning, of uh, being authentic, um, authenticity, whether when I'm a leader, you know, um, when I'm leading the team, how can I be authentic? How can I share uh, something more auth- with authentically. Um, how can I present things or opinions with the right intention, right? And express myself authentically. So that is also one of the things that I'm practicing myself. Yeah. So the that's 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 what is going on. And you know, to to speak about this topic, authenticity, before I even come up. I have so much of thoughts about it because I feel, am I, am I the right person to talk about authenticity when I am still peeling, peeling off my mask? You know, I am still learning to peel off my mask. But I feel, you know, only when you have done it, then you will know whether you are the right person or not. Right. So I, I feel this is one of the biggest takeaway for me personally. And I've been hosting the, the talk for so long. And this is the first time I am a guest speaking um, about a topic as such. Right. And I really hope that uh, um, any one of you who are listening and this will also impact you um, positively as well. I have link over here. Being authentic with our team also gain trust and build engagement. Yeah. You see, Ling, just now you shared about being vulnerable. Being vulnerable is one of the way to, ex- to, to express and practice authenticity. I agree with you very much. And a lot of time, leaders always feel that they shall not show their weakness in front of their team. But when we are practicing about mindfulness, about leading with heart, you know, leadership with love, leadership with compassion, what's wrong with the leader showing vulnerability in front of their teammates? And this take me time to practice as I as I shared and openly, you know, share on live before that I'm such a high egoistic person and for me to show my vulnerability in front of my teammates especially when I'm holding the role as a leader wow I tell you it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of a lot of uh I would say it takes a lot of meditation for me to digest my feeling yeah it takes a lot of reflection because through meditation I reflected myself um why I can't right? How can I be more open? You know, because only like what Ling, you say, I I really agree with you so, so much. Because of authenticity, it will build trust, you know, it will engage and, and, and also engage with the team more positively and things can move forward 
uh, march forward positively as well. I have Vivian over here. Now that you are diligently practicing authenticity, what is the main difference in your feelings and maybe your outcome of any conflict? Um, I would say a lot of time I will make the choice to step back when something triggers my emotion. Uh, when I say triggers my emotion over here, it's more of a negative emotions that I'm saying. Um, of course, you know, whether 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 or not we like it or not, we are still human, right? There are things that we will still feel hurtful when anyone um, say something, right? But I noticed uh, what I did was to really step back, um, reflect on myself first, or at least allow that person to express and let that person know that, you know what, I'll get back to you. Let me digest what you have say, but I'll definitely get back to you. So instead of continuing arguing or making a point like how I used to be, must win attitude, I, I will use this approach for myself. That, you know what, I'll get back to you. Uh, let me digest. And what I digest is to digest my emotion first and to understand my emotion first. And then, only then, I go back and have an open heart discussion with that person or, or, yeah, or with that group, you know. So I hope Vivian, this answer you as well. And I, I see that, uh, I see that the conflict reduce. I think one of the best way to uh, experiment this was with my parents, with my mom. Yeah, it reduced a lot of conflict. It reduced a lot of conflict uh, between me and my mom because I used to be so impatient and not even allowing her to express herself. And now a lot of time I will step back and listen to her. Yeah. So Ling over here also is sharing, as leader, we are not Wonder Woman. Yeah. But we aim to be Wonder Woman, you see. <laughs> we are just like them. Exactly. So this is Ling. Very much, I, this is what I learned for the past few months as well. Yeah, to be more and more open and to be more and more authentic, you know, to, to really know who I am more and more, deeper and deeper. Yeah. Ling is also sharing, taking a step back approach is good advice. Yeah. Sometimes we get too emotional and may not be the right mind to make the right decision. Yep, exactly. Exactly. This is this is this is what I truly feel. Um, you know, uh, 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 what I learned as well. And I would really, really agree that, you know, sometimes whatever that person say, you know, you know it's not making you feel good, um, making you feel very discomfort. The best way is really, you know, let that person know that um, you need some time to digest and you will get back to them, yeah? And of course, again, I must remind everyone when I say digest, it's not to digest what that person say. Like, why, why that person say like this? Why like that? Why like that? Da, da, da. No, it's to digest our emotion first. Because without that, we will not have the right mind to continue the conversation. And with that, uh, I would really love to share this with everyone here. Uh, we have a workshop that comes with the, our magazine. Uh, July volume, volume 25, Being the Light You Are, which is happening next Saturday right after the live talk, 3 to 5 p.m. and is via Zoom. So everyone is welcome to join. All you need to do is, all this is uh, with a purchase of the magazine of the volume 25. And you can get the volume 25, is uh, Ringgit Malaysia 10 only, or you can subscribe uh, with us for one year it will cost you 40 ringgit a year for a transformational journey with Body Mind Soul magazine. As simple as that, I believe our admin will also share it out on the link as well. So why is it that I, I want to share about the workshop is because, you see, you see, I came from so much of egoistic blah, 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 right? And I believe always we were born with pure love and light when we were a baby. You know, when you look at a baby, right, they glow so much, right? You just want to hug them. You have no reason, but you just love them. 
right? Whether that is your own child or not, I do not know about the rest. But for me, when I look at a baby, I just love them. I was just so attracted by their love and by the light that they carry because they are so pure. So along the way, uh, along the way, right, things have happened, things have changed us, situation have changed us as well. So one of these about Lucy workshop is to re is to help us to to bring us back to our original state being the light you are is to also let us to know who we truly are and also help us to you know to let go that part of the ego maybe you or i don't like you know uh link yes campaigns sg you can pay with credit card you can pay with credit card. You can buy online on credit card. Link every every of our volume, right? Now moving forward, we do have the e uh, e magazine as well, where that's where that's how I pull out the article as well. So you can either subscribe a uh, one year, which is four volume, forty ringgit Malaysia, or you can buy per volume, which is this twenty five. So because next volume we also have another different workshop as well. So each 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 magazine comes with a theme. And then our workshop, our complimentary workshop, our free workshop, right? That is for our readers will also go according to the theme as well. So Ling, you can pay with credit card. I believe that credit card, I'm not sure. I think it, you, you should, it shouldn't be a problem because we have a lot of uh, readers around the world as well. Yeah. So I hope this helped you as well. Uh, let's see. Over here, Vivian said, I respect your honor sharing in today's talk, especially on your previous must win attitude. Yeah, the righteousness, man, the must win. Everything also must win. Uh, how to subscribe? Uh, well, uh, I think link, I will get our admin to pull out the subscription link now on our website. And if you are watching it with our uh, on laptop, you can also scan this QR code. Yeah, if you are having your mobile phone, you can scan. If not, I'm sure they will put up the subscription link very, very shortly over here. Let me see whether I have the subscription link over here. Oh yeah, I don't have, but I'll get the admin to do that. Yeah, so link, we will publish the subscription link. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, this is the article, darling. Uh, she's asking about the subscription. Okay, no worry. We will put it down on the comment link for you as well. Okay, so with that, I hope all of us here had a beautiful afternoon. <sighs> when it comes to the to the end, I finally feel I finally feel at peace. <laughs> I finally feel, yeah, now I'm really my authentic self. I can go sit a cup of tea and, and eat a slice of cake. Oh, no, I cannot. I'm still on fasting mode. <laughs> so, uh, any last comment? Any last question? Um, oh, I have Sean over here sharing about the website already. Link, I hope this, you can see this link now, bodymindso.com.my slash shop. You can click the one-year subscription over there. Or what I can do now is to also uh, share this view for you so that uh, you can tell where to go. Bodymindsoul.com.my Let me just show you. Okay, let me just show you the screen a little bit. Link just so that you know where to find us. Okay, sorry, take some time, but no worries, no hurries. So over here, link, you can find the shop, our website, the shop under the shop, you can either subscribe this one year or you can and download the e-magazine or you can also get our latest volume. So all our past volume are all available on our website, as you can see over here. So this is where you can subscribe. Yes, so that's all about it. So thank you very much to Ling, to Vivian, to all the viewer. Thank you, Sean, for joining. Lao as well. Fast, fast, fasting. Yeah, I'm still fasting. I decided to break fast tonight. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, so I hope everyone has a good uh, afternoon and, you know, as I speak, I'm also walking the journey of becoming more and more authentically, more and more of myself as I keep on sharing with everyone over here. It's definitely a journey that one must walk to understand the beauty 
uh, at the end of the road and to to taste that sweet fruit of who you truly are. And because when, like now, I'm truly being myself finally, right? Drop down all the expectation. I can feel the ease, the peace, the happiness, the joy as well as I speak. It's never too late, even though it's after one hour, only then I start to feel this, but it's never too late. At least I practice, at least I try it out, at least I have pushed myself to do something that I feel discomfort, but yet it helped me to peel down another layer of my mask. So I hope every one of us will continue to uh, learn who we are, continue to discover that beautiful us inside us. And if you want to know the faster route to go there is to join our workshop next week, Being the Light You Are. As I say, baby born with pure love and light inside them. So this is who we are. This is our innate self. And let us walk on a journey together with Body, Mind, Soul magazine and Body, Mind, Soul festival to uncover and discover and rediscover who we truly are, that love, that light, that beingness that is within us. So thank you so much for joining us next week. If I'm not mistaken, we are talking about love. Am I right? Dear admin, give me a nod. Next week, are we talking about love? Okay, yes. So for those of you who wants to understand love in a different context, we have a guest. So next week, it's not me talking about love huh? because I'm still learning about love, okay? I have an expert master of love to talk about love. So Ling, thank you for staying. Thanks for all the sharing as well from you. I love I love having this discussion with you, even though it's on uh, virtual, even though it's through your comments, but I can feel you right next to me having a conversation with me as well. So I hope to see you next week, Ling. It's the same time, two o'clock. So uh, let's discuss about love in a different context. And I love to hear her voice uh, all the way from Australia. So I'll see you all next week at two o'clock. All right, goodbye and have a good afternoon and hope to see you at our workshop next Saturday as well. Thank you and have a good weekend. Bye.